Yes, sir. First fish on the horse fly. Little dinky bluegill. But he ate it good. The sun's still coming up. Low light conditions plus dirty water, so it's making it hard for these fish to see. But he choked that thing. That's what's up. Little bluegill, hopefully we can find a big one today. Awesome. All right, cool. Feeling optimistic, feeling real optimistic. Still waking up a little bit, but I'm feeling optimistic. Fish nice and slow. Dirty water, oh, there's a bite. So you got it? Got him. Ooh, that one feels better. That one feels better. Got to fish nice and slow, be patient. This water's dirty. Plus, the sun's not even out yet. That's a nice one. On the horse fly, brand new bait. Oh my gosh, he choked it. Choked it. Holy smokes, good sign. Horse fly, bluegill. Match made in heaven, baby. Let's go. Good morning from the lake. It really is a good morning. I am in my kayak right now. I just had a cup of coffee, and now, my friends, we are launching the horsefly. This is a brand new bait from Mule Fishing. Super stoked to finally release it. I've been working on this thing for a long time. Essentially what it is, is it's a small insect profile. It's 1.5 inches, and it's gonna be dynamite for lots of different species. As you know, mule fishing is all about light line multi-species action, and insects play such a critical role in the uh, forage for many species. Trout, panfish, the list goes on, I'm super stoked to put these things to use. Now, I've got five colors here with me and I'll show them to you as we go through. But most importantly today, I just wanna fish with the thing, kinda of show it off a little bit, hopefully catch some big fish. Um, I actually caught a couple bluegill already before the sun came up, so feeling pretty optimistic. Regardless, I'm stoked. So I'll stop rambling, let's get to fishing. Well, as you guys know, life is kinda of busy right now, so I don't have a ton of time to fish, but I am stoked to be out here. I'm up here early in the morning, so hopefully the wind doesn't give us too many problems. I'm in the paddle kayak solely because it takes so much longer to rig up my other pedal drive kayak. Obviously, I prefer my pedal drive kayak, but because it takes longer, it gives me less time to fish. So I decided I'm gonna use this because it's such a good throw and go. Unfortunately, that means that I'm not have a fish finder or any fancy gear. I'm just gonna fish very minimalist. It's basically just gonna be my ultralight and me and we're just gonna see what we can do. The water's really dirty and we've got low light conditions right now. So I'm just gonna fish nice and slow around weed beds and hopefully we can find some big bluegill. Now I'm starting with the color called red dirt. This is obviously a red color and a lot of insect larvae actually kind of that bright red color. So I think it's gonna be dynamite and I find that bluegill really, really like red color as well as trout actually. Oh, there's a short strike right there. I've just had a lot of luck with red in the past. So I definitely wanted to include this uh, in the horsefly lineup and I am super stoked about it. There we go. I think this is a small one. Ah, you know what? I might be wrong. Might be wrong. Might be a pretty good sunfish. Holy smokes, he's dogging me. At first I thought he was small. No, that's a nice one, man. Holy smokes. All right, beautiful pumpkin seed. Well, that's cool. Uh, that's freaking cool, and I freaking pinned him too. Now I'm fishing the horsefly right now on a 1 32nd ounce black mule jig. You can fish this bait numerous ways, but I say the mule jig in the 1 80th through 1 32nd ounce sizes is gonna be your best friend. Uh, otherwise, you know, I think a drop shot's gonna be insane with this bait too. Um, you can obviously fish it on other jigs if you'd like. I think like little tiny split shot rigs, stuff like that, um, will all be highly effective. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the other mule fishing soft plastic, the donkey tail, uh, these are high stretch, they're high durability. So this thing's gonna last a lot of fish. And even though bluegill are notorious for short striking, this will hold up over time. So that makes me very happy. And that is exactly what I wanted. So I've gotten a few short strikes this morning. And fortunately, that's not going to rip my bait up. One of the ways that I'm personally super stoked to fish this bait is under the float rig for trout and creek chubs. So this winter, you'll probably see me do that quite a lot. I just had another short strike. Does he have it? No, they're just kind of nipping at it. I have a feeling we're around some small bluegill. There he is. Got him. You know what? Might actually be a nice one. Golly, they're just kind of nipping right now. You gotta be really ready to set the hook. Not a small fish, I would say. He's very wide. He might not be the longest thing in the world, but he's a dump truck. He's freaking thick. They obviously have a nice source of forage down there because they're thick, they're girthy fish. Not the biggest bluegill in my life by any means, but very healthy fish. I like to see it. See ya, bud. Now, I called it the horsefly, obviously, because it plays into the mule fishing name, but really this is kind of like a mayfly larva. If you look up the different life stages of different insects, especially aquatic insects, you're gonna see exactly why I went this route. As I've talked about with the fisheries biologists in the past, you know, I know that uh, insect larvae are such a key, key, key piece of forage for panfish, trout, the list goes on. And so I wanted to make something nice and natural, but still have kind of a unique profile. Oh my gosh, something chased that up. There's a fish. 
This one's offshore. He's coming right at me. I can't tell if he's big or if he's small. Probably doesn't feel small. I don't know. Another nice pumpkin seed, boys. Heck yes. I've had some short strikes offshore and I couldn't determine if I was having just small fish, like a school of small fish, or if they just weren't able to find it completely. You know, fishing eight foot of water in this dirty water, obviously uh, the fish might not be able to find it super well. In spite of ourselves, we'll end up sitting on a rainbow. Against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. We're gonna spite our noses right off of our faces. It won't be nothing but big old hearts and bluegill on our fly. Hey, look at that. I just uh, caught a bluegill. Rock on, brother. That one's for John Prine. If you don't know who John Prine is, look him up, and I just made your day a lot better. Well, I literally turned off my camera, started swimming it up, and a yellow perch ate it while I was swimming it up. This is actually the first yellow perch I've ever caught at this lake. I didn't even know they were in here. Not a tiny one, but not a big one either. And it goes to show, like I said, yellow perch really like insect larvae as well. There we go, what's this? What do we got here? Oh wow, I don't know how I caught this fish, just a little guy. I've had some short strikes today, I have a feeling there's a lot of little fish like that. Still looks healthy though, and you know, he doesn't look like stunted. I feel like a lot of places have so many dang bluegill, and they're all just so tiny, but that one's just young, I think. Okay, I tell you what, the fishing has definitely slowed down since the sun has started to come up, but I'm still happy. I feel like I've caught quite a few fish and I've only been out here for a little bit. And unfortunately, just because life is so busy right now, I only have a few more minutes to fish. So I'm gonna give it my all and we'll see what happens, but I'm confident that this location will be a little bit better. I think that it's got a lot more natural shade in the morning. So I have a feeling that the fish will be relatively active here. That's a theory, I could be totally wrong, but the only way to find out is to keep casting a blessing. Let's get back to it. Oh, what do we got here? Just an absolute micro bass. Not a big fish, but a dry streak ender. Okay. Oh yeah. What do we got here? This might be a bass. This is probably a bass. Oh, coming at me. It's gotta be a bass. Does not feel like a sunfish. No, no freaking jumbo bluegill. That's what we're after today. Ah, ah, stop splashing me. That's more like it. Daggum, he fought like a bass. He wasn't like doing the kind of like the sunfish spin, I guess I'll call it. A lot of times they kind of twirl around and uh, they're very easy to tell they're a sunfish. I'm going to take a quick length on that fish. He's really girthy. He's not as long as he is fat. That's an eight incher and he is just fat. Golly, that's a healthy fish. It's a beauty. A dang old beauty right there. All right. Thank you, sir. And go on back to your home. There he is. That's probably another nice one. That's another nice one. Same exact spot as the last one. That's another nice one, boys. Yes, sir. Looky there, boys. Looky there. Yep. That's what we're looking for, boys. Horsefly eaters. Nice fish. Loving it. I am just loving it. Okay. See ya, bud. Now you'll notice there's a lot of dragonflies around here. Now, one thing you have to remember is dragonflies are obviously an aquatic insect. You know, dragonfly larva, mayfly larva, all sorts of different aquatic insects. They spend more of their life underwater than they do out flying around. And it is just something I feel like a lot of anglers kind of forget because you don't see them, so you don't think about them. But if you wanna be serious about certain fish species, you're gonna to need to think about them because it's such an important part of the forage for those fish. Yes, feels like a decent one. Tucked up in that shade, there's a little pocket in the grass and it's nice and shady. It's a big chungus is what this is. God, they're all so healthy. Makes me so happy to see. Clearly they're feeding heavily on something. Nothing long, but definitely chunky. I'm loving it. I am loving it. 
Okay, I tell you what, I just rigged up the kayak to the roof and I do got to get home to my family. It was a fun little trip. You know, I was out there for a couple hours, caught quite a few fish, caught some nice bluegill, caught some nice pumpkin seed. But I wanted to wrap today's video up with uh, a showcase of the colors that these are available in. And you can obviously check them out more at www.mulefishing.com. That being said, these are available in five different colors to start. We've got black. We've got Dakota Sunrise. We've got this natural light brown color that I'm actually calling Ranch Hand. And I'll tell you why I named it Ranch Hand. I actually named it that to honor my good friend, one of my best friends in the world, Dan. He's actually a fly fishing guide, and you may have seen him in a couple of videos of mine. And the thing is, is a lot of people see him and say, wow, you're so lucky, you're a fly fishing guide, you have such a cool job. The reality is, he busted his butt to get that job. He was a ranch hand for many years, earned his stripes, and he just was out there doing some serious work. And I have nothing but respect for a good, hard work ethic. And I wanted to name a color after him, because not only is he one of my best friends in the world, who I really do love, um, but also I just have a a lot of respect for his hard work ethic. So ranch hand. Next up is the color I actually use today and that is red dirt. This little color right here is going to be one of my personal favorites and I look forward to seeing what everybody catches on it. I think it's going to be deadly for panfish and trout. And then lastly we have good old white. You just simply can't go wrong with white. I personally think this is going to be awesome for jigging up some crappie on but I think it's going to work for pretty much any species out there. That all being said I do need to get home to my family so thank you so very much for watching. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>